So the problem at hand here is to figure out the method for determining where an earthquake occurred, determining the epicenter of an earthquake. The first thing we have to do is determine the distance of the earthquake from a seismic station. So this diagram is showing what seismologists refer to as the travel time curves for P waves, pressure waves, S waves, shear waves, and the surface waves. This has been determined from analysis of millions of earthquakes. So y-axis is travel time in minutes, distance here on the x-axis in thousands of kilometers. If we have a seismogram recorded at a particular seismic station, we don't know where that earthquake occurred, we can determine the distance of that earthquake from the seismic station by determining the time of arrival of the P wave and then looking at the time of arrival of the S wave. So notice on the diagram here that the time difference between the arrival of the P wave and the S wave increases with distance of the earthquake from the seismic station. In the example shown on the slide here, the difference between the arrival time of the P wave and the S wave is about 4 minutes and 45 seconds, and that falls only one place on the travel time curve. So this then, this time difference between P and S wave of 4 minutes and 45 seconds would indicate that that earthquake occurred about 3,300 kilometers away from that particular seismic station. Now, to determine the location of an earthquake, you actually need to do this for a minimum of three seismic stations. Let's say, for example, that we analyzed a seismogram from an earthquake recorded at Columbus, and the distance tells us that that earthquake occurred someplace along this solid circle around Columbus. We don't know what direction. If we have the record then from another seismic station, let's say at St. Louis, and it tells us that the earthquake was close to St. Louis, much closer to St. Louis than to Columbus, then this could indicate then that the earthquake must have occurred someplace on this dashed perimeter around St. Louis. From those two seismic stations, we would have two intersections of these circles. So the earthquake could have occurred here, or it might have occurred here. We need at least one more record of the earthquake the example here is from Memphis, and the earthquake is closer yet to Memphis than Columbus or St. Louis. The earthquake occurred someplace on the circle around Memphis, which is shown by the long dash and the short dash here. So for three different seismic stations, we can determine a unique intersection of these circles. This would indicate then that the earthquake occurred at this location here at New Madrid. If we map that onto spherical geometry on the Earth, instead of just looking at it on a flat map, then we could consider what happens for an earthquake which may have occurred on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The idea is the same. You still need three records from three different seismic stations. And the diagram here shows records at Montreal, with the distance of the earthquake from Montreal being 8,400 kilometers, thus determining that the earthquake must have occurred on the red circle someplace. We have a record from Paris. We can use the S minus P time to determine that the earthquake was 6,700 kilometers from Paris and must have occurred someplace along the orange circle. And then the third seismic station at Sao Paulo. The earthquake is closer to Sao Paulo than it is to Paris or to Montreal. We can use S minus P time to determine that that earthquake was 5,500 kilometers from Sao Paulo. Must have occurred someplace along the blue circle here. And the three circles will intersect then at the epicenter of that earthquake. 